If your quads lack that sweep and roundness to them, let me show you how to get it. All right, so one of my clients, Roger, asked me to make a video on how to make his quad sweep grow and really go into detail about the things I do to make my quads so round. Now, I will admit that a portion of this is genetic. So if your quads are just thicker through the teardrop or better through the rec film or you just lack, it's more straight up and down, you really can fix it or make it better. It may not be great in Olympia winning, but we can definitely make it better by making that muscle grow. So that sweep is what we wanna focus on today and that's what we're gonna get after. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is really feeling it and learn how to activate it. So quads for me are a muscle that have always came pretty natural to me. I can sit here and I can flex every portion of my quad. VMO, rec film, sweep, does not matter. Adductors, hamstrings, glutes, I have a great mind-muscle connection with them. If you do not, I would highly encourage you to when you're standing or seated, try to make the different muscles and portions of your quad fire. So right now I can feel my sweep, hammer, hammer, hammer. And all I'm doing is driving, if this is my foot, I'm thinking about driving on the outside, the pinky, and kind of twisting it, almost trying to press it under the ground. So take my foot and turn it this way is what I'm thinking about and making that muscle fire and even twitch. I can feel it twitching. We just trained legs, so my quads are pretty blew up. But if you think about that, just have that mind muscle connection with them. Learn to develop it. If you can't feel your VMO, find ways of contracting that quad to make it work. So if you can't make it contract under no load, how are you gonna get it contract under a thousand pounds on a leg press? The answer is you're probably not. So that's step one. Learn to fire that muscle tissue and get it rock hard. And then we're gonna take that same premise and apply it to the leg press. That's what I'm gonna do with exercise one. We're gonna do a V stance leg press feet low on the platform. If we put our feet high and wide, that's gonna get our hamstrings and adductors. We do not want that. We want the quad sweep. So to me, the best way for me to feel that in a leg press is put my feet very, very low on the platform, put my heels together, toes out, and really think about driving about the outside portions of my foot. Let me show you what a couple of those reps look like. So with my feet, if you look on this entire platform, it's a split platform. I wanna have my toes right at that bend, and then that's a good width. All I wanna do is take my heels and shift them inward. So I'm right there, and that puts me in perfect alignment. Let's unrack the sled. And what I'm thinking about is driving down my pinky with, so on the outside portion, I'm, this, I'm exaggerating so you can see it. That's the part of my foot I wanna drive off of, the part of the heel I wanna drive off of to make this muscle fire. So with these, you wanna get really good and deep here, as low as you can go. So for me, that's my end range. If I went any lower, my lower back would begin to round and, my, and the low would be transferred to my low back and I do not want that. So here, pressure on the outside of my foot, drive up to three-fourths lockout, not to there. That's taking all the pressure of my quads, putting them on my knees. So we start short, that's a, definitely a pro tip for you. Come down, control that load, feel that muscle stretch, and then only using that muscle, press up. Now I say only, that's what you wanna think about. The other portions of your quad will fire, but think about driving with this portion of the quad. Let me show you a couple reps. We have no weight on the sled. It doesn't matter. Right there, good range of motion and up. Now, one of the cool techniques you can also do if you really wanna get in tune with this exercise, fully pause in the hole. So come down, pause that rep good and deep, then let it settle and then drop off from the outside portion of my foot. Here, let it settle, press up here, right there. Boom, right there. Now, third tip. So the first one was learn to activate. Two was on the leg press. Now, the third tip, the take home here with quads, just like shoulders, it's gonna have to take a lot of pain to make those things grow. You're gonna have to fight reps. When you think you can only do 10, you gotta find a way to get 20, 25, 30. You're gonna have to fight that pain. You're on your legs all day, standing, walking from the time you were three years old and up. Your legs are used to a lot of punishment of carrying your body weight. So we have to do things that are extremely intense. If you notice a lot of things I post on Instagram, my quads, I'm doing 20 to 30 reps. And you'll read in the magazines or on the internet or on Instagram, you gotta go heavy weight and low reps. Well, that never worked for my quads, it didn't. All it did was mess my, make my knees hurt. So, or my low, especially my low back. So with quads for me, 15 to 30 is that sweet spot. I can go as low as eight or 10, but I like to be in that higher rep range. Use a lot, as much weight as you can, fight that pain, and then you just gotta dig your heels in and crank, man. Like at the end of the day, that's how your quads are gonna grow. All right, let's go to exercise number two.
Exercise number two, the hack squat. Now, I like doing this shoulder width, so just get a good stance, and I'll show you when I get on the platform. My toes are gonna be slightly out, so not crazy, but like, if you think about a clock, 11 and one, not 10 and two, definitely not nine and three, but 11 and one, again, with hack squat, I like to bury that thing. Sink down super, super low, and then we're still gonna press off the outside portion of our foot to really make that quad sweep work. For me, hack squats are a go-to exercise and a mass builder for legs, and it always has been for me since I've had access to one. All the way through college, I never got to use one. So when I got out of college, I got to use one, and my legs took off. So that's a thorough believer in the hack squat. Work it, get super, super deep. Not so deep for your lower back rounds, but again, you have to work within your range of motion. So for me, I'm very fortunate. I have very good ankle mobility. So sinking these down to where my hamstrings touch my calves are not an issue. If you can get there, great. If not, work on your ankle mobility, and then you'll be able to get start bearing your reps. The lower you go, the heavier weights we use. Guess what? Then your legs are gonna blow up. So let me show you a couple reps. Shoulder width, midway up on the platform. If you can get here, that's fine. I like on this particular machine, I like to be right in the middle. And if you notice that shoulder width, you notice my toes are a little out. They're not straight ahead. They're definitely not in and they're not here. So right at like what I would consider a level and one. Unrack the sled. We're gonna sink these deep, just like that. And then we're gonna press straight up. And if you notice at the bottom, look at my, if you look at my feet, I'll have Chad zoom in on me. My feet are flat on that ground. And if you notice, my heels are flat, my hamstrings are sitting on my calves, and then I'm gonna press up to the outside portion of my foot, and that's a rep. Again, just like with, with uh, leg press, we don't wanna lock out here. We wanna leave a little bit of bend, and then we're just gonna crank reps down deep and up. Just like that. I like a rep range. With this, I, like, I don't mind going as low as eight and really packing the weight on but I do like to dig in and do as many as 20, 25, or even 30. So again, with legs, keeping the higher rep range, definitely above eight, and then it just work. It's gonna burn, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna cramp, it's, your brain's gonna tell you to stop, but if you want big legs and you are dedicated to making them freaky, it's gonna take a lot of work. Let's go to exercise number three, final one for the day. So next up is the split squat. Now, you'll hear a lot of people say, this is great for your glutes, and I will agree if your form is different, but I'm gonna show you the technique I use to smash my outer sweep or my quad. And then I'm also gonna show you, let me show you right now what it looks like for the glute. So with the glute, I'm gonna let chest pan over to the side. I wanna keep my shin straight up and down here, but then watch the move, it's there. If you notice, I shot my hip back, so it's here, hip back, shin is straight up and down, and my torso is moving towards my quad. That is hammering and fully lengthening my glute on this side. If I wanna hit quad, watch what happens here. I'm thinking about driving my knee over my toe and my torso is up, so I'm here. I'm getting tons of what people would consider knee extension, and guess what that is? All quad. So with this exercise, your torso and your shin is what dictates what muscle is maximally worked. Now, you won't lie, if you do that glute way, your quads are still gonna burn and be on fire. You may even get some glute work when your torso is upright. This exercise is really hard, especially if you loaded heavy. Like today, for example, we worked up to a, with a band and 100 pounds. That smashed everything on your lower body, but my focus primarily was on hammering my quads. So let me show you what a couple of these reps look like. I'm gonna use the uh, hill elevation here because that's gonna really put an extra emphasis on allowing me to get deep and go drive my knee over my toe. If you don't have one of these, it doesn't matter. You can use a five pound plate, you can, or you can use nothing, honestly. You can still do the exact same motion. So let me show you a couple of reps. So we're here, knee over two, torso up. And imagine if this is too easy, hold a dumbbell, put a band over you, just like that. And you notice I'm not getting to there. I'm keeping that, quads for me is all about that three force range of motion, very similar to chest. You'll never see me on a chest exercise go here. It's always that three force. For me, that's the way quads grow best. I keep that weight in play and it fully loaded on my quad. All right, that was my three go-to exercises for smashing my quad sweep. If you want big round full quads like Tom Platt's had, Kai Green, Desmond Miller, this is the kind of stuff you have to do. You have to learn how to first connect with that muscle and then take that connection and apply it to the weight room because that carryover is huge. Then from there, you just gotta crank on it. And then guess what you do after you crank on it? You go home and eat. So it's kind of a cyclical cycle. Learn how to activate it, train the piss out of it, eat, rest, recover, come back and do it again next week. Thanks for following along guys. Hope this is useful. If you guys put this into place, shoot a video of it and then put it on my Instagram. I'd love to see you guys working and cranking hard. Thanks for following along guys. Have a great day.